fire safety, and more tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome in on this Friday evening. Great to have you aboard as many of you loyal viewers and now brand new viewers should or do know or will know. Uh, we tape our Friday programs on Thursdays, so we kind of let the news of the day roll over the weekend and pick it up on Monday. We'll have a kind of year in review program coming up on Monday evening with journalists Dan McGowan and Ian Donis and include everything that's been happening. How are we going to do that in a half an hour uh, in this state over 2018? And of course, a little bit of Washington. And I don't know that you can do a year in review. I don't think you can do a minute in review uh, when you're covering Washington in one program, but I think you get the picture. So anyway, welcome aboard. You may see the show. You're seeing the show originally on December 14th. You may see it another time or two during our holiday and vacation schedules uh, because it's a, it's a broad concept that is applicable not just before the holiday, but past the holiday as well. Uh, I always like to have the fire chiefs in to talk about safety. Um, the, the fire departments, I think, uh, deserve uh, they're due in terms of uh, marketing exposure. They do a lot of work other than just attending the fire. There's a lot of prevention work that goes on. There's also a new memorial that we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. So let's get to it. Here's a headline uh, that reminds you that you got to protect that tree. And I think everybody will protect the house from the tree, which is kind of, you know, ironic in a way, right? But uh, take a look at this. 48 seconds, the smoke detector is already sounding. The fire is extended to the side wall, and we're going to start getting roll over at the ceiling where the smoke and flames are going to start rolling out into the portion of the room. Right now, the as you can see, the lights have gone out, which means we've had the electrical outlet trip, which means not only do we have a Christmas tree fire, but now we could extend it to an electrical source of fire. Uh, just a how not to. You know, we've had that video rolling around for a while, but... I think they ought to be fairly impressed about how quick that tree is going up and what's happening around it. Um, on the left is Chief Richard Susie, who's the executive director of the Rhode Island Association of Fire Chiefs and his VP, the current fire chief in East Providence, uh, Oscar Almasian. Guys, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for uh, having us. Thank you for having us. It, you know, I, everybody's, everybody knows they've got to be careful, <laughs> but is everybody careful? We say forgetful. No, uh, they, they get forgetful. They forget to, um, when they're setting up the Christmas tree, they're forgetting to check the strand of lights. Uh, they overload their circuits. They forget to water the Christmas tree. Uh, they forget that they're using interior lighting on our out exterior purpose. And before you know it, unfortunately, we have incidents like that video that we just showed. And uh, what, what's more important than anything is the installation of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. I, I can't tell you that um, they save lives. Who doesn't have them? Lots of people, Richard? Uh, lots of people? We certainly hope not, Dan. It, it's something in this data? day and age, you know, it's tough to have data on who at the, at the current moment is having active and working smoke detectors. That's that's the issue right there because there's still a lot of people that have battery operated smoke detectors. Everybody's not hardwired in, you know, houses uh, that are built after a certain But even those babies, you know, that start screeching if the if the battery is dead. That's so, I mean, right? They're supposed to. They're, they're supposed, supposed to. to. You know, and there are a lot of programs to make sure that smoke detectors get installed at home. The Red Cross does a, a, a great job with, with making sure that they're available uh, to people that may not have the means to put them in. So all we can do is to keep trying and to keep pushing and to make sure if somebody's watching that don't have smoke detectors, if they're still out there, they can contact their local fire department. And I'm, I will guarantee you they will find a I'll way get to get them smoke detectors for their home and Re carbon monoxide. As really? Well. Uh, yeah. Even, yeah. Even if it's a budgetary issue Nobody's like going to go without. Some way, somehow, we'll, we'll find a way. It will happen. Uh, we, is we there will. a formal program to that, or are you just telling you that's that's the soul of fire protection in the state? And that's the it, soul it, of fire protection. The, the, we do have campaigns. 
uh, that are sponsored by, we, we, we did one in East Providence where we advertised through the Red Cross. And we, it was a collaborative effort with the East Providence Fire Department and the Red Cross, and we canvassed the entire city and those who called up and um, asked for smoke detectors. We went to the house, we had them installed. But uh, another important feature about smoke detectors is that if a uh, house has been built post 1970s, they're hardwired smoke detectors, they still have batteries. Well, what happens is that the battery starts chirping, they pull the battery out, the smoke detector is still operational because it's AC powered. Once the power goes off in the storm, now they have nothing. So the manufacturers uh, have gone one step further. So you're, you're lulled into a false sense of security, or you know what, we'll get the battery later. That's right. And you forget about it. So technology's gotten the, has increased better, whereas it's a 10 year lithium battery that is self contained. You can't pull it out. So that once that detector starts chirping to replace it, you have to replace the whole detector, but it's good for 10 years. Someone in fire prevention and fire safety will also tell you that it's very important to have a home fire escape plan to know what you're gonna do, especially if you have little children. What is your plan? Should these smoke detectors go off? And it's not just a false alarm. Something's actually happening. What are the kids gonna do? Where are they gonna go? What are their two exits? And how are they gonna attack the problem if it should happen? Yeah, it's and, probably, and that's very important. Uh, uh, Chief, that's, that's, that's probably the thing that most people don't do. You're right. Because you don't wanna scare your kids, right? Uh, so you have to find a, a creative way to raise the awareness, but not you know waking up in the middle of the night with bad dreams, right? And, so. and, and how else that helps us is that if they do that, when we pull up and our company officers who are first to arrive, and they say, is everyone out of the house? That assures us that everyone's out of the house. If not, now we're gonna conduct a primary search, and then you run into, and, and I, I hate to bring it up, but the, the tragedy in the past week in Worcester, where we had you know, went, went to that. a five alarm fire because they were looking for people in that six unit apartment building. So that's why it's a good idea. And we're creative in the fire prevention and we integrate it with the schools that you do it in a coloring scheme and have the kids draw out an escape route. And, and it's a work in progress. You never quit, you just got to keep doing it. So, specifically to the Christmas tree, what you're saying is it's not, ju it's not just the worry of the tree kind of going dead. It's the, the pressure you're putting on the electrical system. It's the electrical is system. That, is that what is the most cause, which is that the lights start to, to burn? 40%. Because the wires are fraying? 40% of uh, incidents involving Christmas tree fires are from electrical sources. Also, the close proximity of any heating appliance. You've got to be a minimum of three feet away from a Christmas tree or any combustible with any type of electrical appliance or a fireplace or a stove. and. and you just got to keep the, the tighter the quarters. People. A lot of people live in apartments right. and the like. You know, the smaller the square footage, the more likelihood is that everyone's trying to, you know, that's right. Just and, jam and, that stuff in. And, right? and and the senior citizen population is is money's tight. And they're going to do whatever they can to stay warm. And and we just had one this past week in East Providence, and it was we don't know if it was a faulty heating appliance or was it the proximity of the heating appliance to a combustible. And those are one or two options that we have to weigh out for the cause. Do we have data on the number of fires that increase during the holiday season? Do they specifically? We do. There is data. Yeah. Yes. It really? That's meaning they do. They do. And, and um, of, of the reported structure fires caused by Christmas trees, uh, there were one out of 32 fires there was a death compared to regular structure fires caused by other means. One out of every 43 fires there was a death. So Christmas tree season certainly increases the chance of, of tragedy. And, and, and the, I think it, between a four year period, there was over $800 million worth of property loss because of a Christmas tree yeah. fire. The one thing though that I think uh, is resonated over the years talking to these important public servants is that if, if, if you're wondering, don't hesitate to call. Honestly, I've been honest about this. I've had two calls to the Cumberland Fire Department in my tenure. Both have turned out to be, oh, God, I am such an idiot. Uh, and they've been carbon monoxide, uh, carbon monoxide alarms that went off. They're batteries, but it was different sound and blah, blah, blah. And actually, uh, on, on both occasions, and of course, you guys have to come with everything. 
So you can't just get, <laughs> woo, you know, there's a reason for that. I know, <laughs> we talk about it all the time. That, you yeah. come with the trucks and the thing, and it's like, oh, my God. You and actually, send them back. The same group of firefighters actually, like on a four separate, I mean, four years, five years, six years, I don't know what it was, separation, are like, uh, I'm like, oh, my God, yeah. But you know what? If you're worried, get out. Don't mess around with that because that's the silent killer. That's right. right. And call 911. Right. Call your local department with any questions. If it's an emergency, obviously call 911. But don't hesitate to call your local department for any fire safety or fire prevention And, and, and you questions. should never be embarrassed. I, 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 I would think despite what the public impression might be, and I don't know why it would be, I, I've never experienced uh, aggravation. No. No, from fire, you're not gonna, fire, no. firemen, or, uh, fire people who who arrive on scene, they, they want to work. They want to go out, right? They want to help. Yeah. yeah. And, and and when you when you say we, we show up with everything, years ago we would send one truck, and then you get there and it's not a carbon monoxide, or it's not a small mishap. We got heavy fire on the second floor. Now we uh, better fill this in. You got to call everyone there. Now we bring everyone, and we can turn it back. But when we talk about carbon monoxide, one thing that should be mentioned is that with technology and the direct vent heating appliances that we have, that instead of a chimney, we direct the vent out a sidewall. Uh, be careful in the winter months where it snows, and the snow may build up against the house and clog that exhaust. Right. You got to you got to go out and shovel that right. stuff. Right. You got all that? You taking notes? Please be careful. If you have questions, call your fire department. There's a new memorial that I want to talk about. Stay with us. So there's a, a little bit of a, a headline that tells you about this new memorial project. Why don't we uh, find out what it's about? Shovels broke ground to kick off the project Thursday. It will be led and partially funded by the Rhode Island Association of Fire Chiefs and their charitable arm, the RIAFC Foundation. To assist with the bill, they are also getting help from all over the state. We're doing a fundraising effort. The 100 Club of Rhode Island has stepped up with a $50,000 donation. Other uh, fire organizations have come forward with $5,000 donations. The memorial will be a place for people to remember and reflect on the sacrifices of Rhode Island firefighters. When the project is finished, they intend to give the memorial to the state of Rhode Island as a gift. Uh, necessary. I mean, you mentioned, Chief, the, the, the Worcester tragedy in that city. That fire department. Uh, can't catch a break in the month of December. Absolutely. I was there in 1999. I was there in 2011 as a member of the pipe band because it was after 2000, uh, 2001. And when I'll be back there Saturday. And I've got a personal friend that just retired from Worcester. And this is something that will be there. We will support them. And that, that poor department can't catch a break in the month of December. It's, it's just. Well, what's our data on Rhode Island with the number of firefighters that have been lost over the years? Do we we, uh, we're just getting well, that together. Thank, thank God the numbers are relatively low, Dan, and that's, and that's a good thing. No kidding. We, we certainly want to keep those numbers low. But it's not, this memorial is not just for, just for line of duty deaths uh, for firefighters. This is to memorialize firefighters through the tradition and history of the fire service that, ha that have come in the past and given us our history. And we're one of a very small number of states that don't have a statewide firefighter memorial. Uh, we will have one now, but we, we were in a, a small number. I think it was just four states that don't have a firefighter memorial. Uh, you know, the, for the past you know, 20 years or so, we had been working to, to get our Rhode Island uh, Fire Academy up and running and built in Exeter on the old Lad School property. And that has finally happened, and it's, it's up and running, and I think uh, class number eight is going to start. Uh, in in uh, March, so we're going strong. But out in the front of this beautiful building that was uh, that was just completed a couple years ago, we realized that it's a, a fantastic location to put a statewide firefighter firefighters memorial, where the public can actually come to it, not behind the fences of a firefighter a fire academy, but out in the public, right in front of that building, and it's going to be a, a great location. And privately funded. This is being funded by an effort, uh, well, you know, Rhode Island Association of Fire Chiefs and our charitable foundation, the RIAFC Foundation, have gotten together, uh, raised some seed money, we hired an architect, uh, we had a plan drawn up, uh, created some renderings which you saw uh, uh, on the screen and in that package that, that you, uh, you played uh, on this pamphlet that we have out, 
and we're uh, we're trying to raise money through donations and also we're selling uh, brick pavers uh, uh, to put to line the walkway and the plaza around uh, what's the total uh, expense on the project probably about a hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars and plus we want to raise more than that because we want to raise uh, uh, to enough money to have a perpetual fund to keep it maintained uh, but it's uh, it's not a, a huge big dollar item as some projects go but and we're probably about better than halfway there uh, but okay, well, let, me, let me ask a really stupid question is it is it normal that all the other states have to privately fund their 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 firefighter memorials? Why, why would this not be a, a line item in a nine point whatever six billion dollar budget in well, the state I, of Rhode I Island? I think just to just to get this this is on state property that's being put. So the biggest <laughs> the, the biggest thing that we needed was a place to put it and a good place where it belongs, which is a fire a state fire academy. Yeah. And so we've got, we, we have the state to agree to give us this location, and obviously we're going to turn it back over to them when it's completed, so that because it is on state property, it's not going to be ours. But uh, yeah, to, this is not a, a needed part of a fire academy. This is a firefighter memorial. We thought that we were the right group at the time to, that had the idea to raise the seed money and to, to move this project forward. And we've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of support so far. Well, Richard, that was a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you that I'm a lobbyist at the yeah, State I, House yeah, for yeah, the Fire yeah, I, I know you are. <laughs> and uh, there was, you know, uh, the, even the Russian judge gives you a 10 on that one. <laughs> uh, although Oscar's oh, head kind of like went this one, way. Right? Like, uh, yeah. Well, actually, Russia, anything these no, days, yeah, you right, probably don't yeah, want to, right? right? Uh, but I think you know what I'm saying. Well, look, you know, I am, uh, you know, a, a financial watchdog, blah, blah, blah. Some people say, but there are certain things that I think are probably well. You know, you know, there is important an, enough. There uh, is an importance for buy-in for things like this. I mean, I, I, selling these pavers, where people can can contact, uh, can go on our website, rifirechiefs.com. They feel like they're part of it, and they can have you know have their name or have the name of a, a firefighter uh, that that came before them in their family or their husband or wife or child or whatever put their name on a brick in this in this uh, memorial that's that's buy-in that's you know yeah. being being personal uh, about it and uh, by the way christmas is coming anybody wants to go on rifirechiefs.com and you go. look to buy sure. a, if they've, if they've got a a favorite firefighter that they'd like to see his name in that memorial on a brick and what do they go for? Per well, the 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 four by eight bricks, one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, eight okay. by eight, three hundred, and then you can get a twelve by twelve for five hundred. So it's a really uh, interesting dynamic, though, the relationship that the community has with the fire department. I mean, they're they're recon you you guys are recognized as heroes, but we also have we have a lot of labor strife. You know, we just we just do, and it's, it seems like and not every firefighter union is the same in every community, and you have to distinguish between what the issues are and blah 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 blah. Um, I guess it's just the, the way of the world. It's, uh, the, it's the nature of the beast uh, these it, days. It's the yeah. nature of the business, the nature of the, of, of the beast. Um, communication is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Education, communication. Uh, firefighters need to get out and, and, and educate the public as to what we do, why we do it. Because how many times have you and been... more stories need to be told. Right. How many times have you been to a fire? Why do they have to cut a hole in the roof? When you go to the different organizations or the schools and you explain and you walk individuals through the process of a structure fire and why we do what we do, then they understand it. Why, 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 why do we have so many firefighters that are building fire? Why are they all standing outside? Well, there's a reason for it. There's a reason why they're standing there. There's a reason why we have so many firefighters there. There's a reason why we have so many trucks there. And after you explain the delivery system of the fire department to the taxpayers or the individuals, they understand that. And of course, it's the nature in which you convey that message also. Yeah, but, I, yeah I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't realize that you get those kinds of complaints. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is it I'm talking about collective bargaining stuff. Oh, and we're oh. not, you know, the, the collective yeah. bargaining stuff is the stuff that pops up and it, it just deteriorates the, the whole. And unfortunately, in, in the firefighter unions, uh, I don't think they're doing a very good job of explaining themselves many times. They, these things are kind of, when I, your visit here is quasi public servicey in nature. Uh, they don't embark on that kind of stuff. I just, I just wish that there was much more um, 
you know, intimacy of communication between fire, the industry, and the taxpayers, which would make everything a little bit better. Well, I can tell you that, you know, just getting back to the memorial just very, very quickly, this memorial is actually going to be a good source of history and tradition for new firefighter candidates that are coming in that go through that Rhode Island Fire Academy. It will be right out in front, and I'm sure that will have They'll graduation. every day that they go in there, And right? that's exactly that's right. what I was going to say, right. that it's important for the up-and-coming fire cadet, the, the cadets that are coming into the fire service to learn about history and tradition of the fire service. And one of the important parts uh, underneath the monument that will be built on, on the, in the memorial will be a compass. And we actually jogged the way this memorial is, is turned. It's circular in, in, in uh, shape. And we turned it slightly to make sure that the compass and the true north points directly through that fire academy building. And that will be mentioned many times, I'm sure, over the years, that true north is through that fire academy in learning and learning the tradition and history of the fire service. And, and that's going to be used as, as part of this memorial. Seems like, it seems like a great project. We only have a couple minutes, and we're sure. going to wrap up uh, when we come back. Stay with us. That's where we have spring. By the way, we will link that information on contributions to the memorial through our own website at foxprovidence.com. I'm winking at Anita, making sure we got that whole thing working out. Uh, I, I think it's just really important that you access your fire department for all the information that you need, whether it is this worry about holiday, uh, an alarm goes off, you don't have any questions, really pay attention to that tree thing, because it's with that data about the rise of occurrences, I mean, it's just unnecessary in so many ways, right? Uh, you guys bring uh, a lot to the table. The Fire Chiefs Association is active. You can reach out. You can learn about a lot about them. And there's just so much history. You know, I was touched, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the retirement, well, actually the, na the, the, the fire department naming ceremony down uh, in South County for retired Chief Fred Stanley. We have a headline here. There he was. What a beautiful man. What, what, a, what a, 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 a pillar of courage. He was. He knows that he's uh, on on his last moments in the twilight of his life. Uh, but he was able to see his name go up on the on, on the building, see all the chiefs there and the firefighters are gathered. Uh, Chief, do you have a, a thought? I only have yeah, a few seconds, he, but what, he, a, what a beautiful a, moment. He's a good friend of mine. I've been down to see him a couple a uh, couple of times since then. Yeah. Like you say, he you know he's he's having some some health issues, but he's showing us all how to be tough. And I mean really tough. But when you see firefighters uh, come together like that, it's Americana. And I think we, we've, we've just got we just gotta remember that. It is. You know, he, he's known across this country. We've been on plenty of professional conferences with Chief Stanley. You can't go anywhere in this country that you don't walk in and somebody says, hey, Fred. Right. They know him. Guys, thank you for, for the orientation. Again, to contribute, the website. RIFireChiefs.com. Easy to remember. Uh, thank you. Appreciate thank you. all your good work. Thank you. Uh, final word when we do come back. Stay with us. Just can't emphasize enough that you got to be careful with the tree. You know, I do. I got the allergy thing going. Uh, and so is the kids. So we don't buy the new tree much anymore. Uh, but even with the artificial trees, don't think that you're out of the woods. Check the lights. Make sure you you know exactly what you're doing. If you have questions, call the fire department. And again, foxprovince.com. We'll link to rifirechiefs.com. You may want to make a contribution and contribute to the history of that firefighter memorial in Exeter. All righty. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a pleasant evening. We'll see you next time. Good night.